Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of New York City Crime Spot. Today, we're going to be discussing an interesting character in New York City criminal history. A man who came to the United States in the 1970s and resumed his criminal career he started in his former home of Ukraine, which at that time was part of the USSR under Soviet rule. I discussed 1970s Jewish immigration into the United States from the Soviet Empire in previous uploads, such as F.C. Agron, the rise and fall of Brighton Beach's first Russian godfather. And they also spoke about the character we will discuss today in a recent live stream, as well as the upload, Anthony Gaspipe Casso hits Vladimir Reznikov, the gas scam, on location in Brighton Beach, Brooklyn. That's right. Today, we're going to be speaking about Vladimir Reznikov. I'll recap some of the things I've previously discussed in terms of Vladimir, and then I'll discuss some of the mind-blowing revelations in the 2022 book, The Last Boss of Brighton, Boris Biba Neyfeld, and the Rise of the Russian Mob in America, written by Douglas Century. Vladimir Reznikov came to the United States from Ukraine in the 1970s. At the time, Ukraine was a part of the USSR. Unfortunately, many men who emigrated from the USSR at that time had already been hardened criminals back home, serving time in Russian prison camps for crimes ranging from large-scale theft to murder. Some of them, veterans of Stalin's gulags. Perhaps one of the most unstable criminals who came to the U.S. and settled in Brighton Beach, Brooklyn, was Vladimir Reznikov. In 1976, 34-year-old Reznikov would be arrested in Los Angeles with 49-year-old Mikhail Bolinik and 41-year-old Boris Bader. The men had been accused of running a scheme on Jewish butchers and other merchants, which involved the sale of Russian gold rubles. The men would produce genuine rubles to show the merchants and explain that they had many more and would sell them at half price. However, when merchants would receive the bag or a case from the men, it would be filled with potatoes, beans, and in some cases, rocks or pebbles. While waiting in jail in California, Reznikov, who was a Brooklyn resident, would be sent to Long Island, New York, to face a judge. In relation to a similar scheme he pulled on a jeweler in Malvern, Long Island, he would serve little time for his Los Angeles scheme, and the victim in the Long Island scheme would fail to properly identify Reznikov in a lineup, which resulted in that case falling apart. In 1979, Reznikov would be court-ordered to pay a Milwaukee butcher by the name of Jack Luzman $12,000 in relation to another gold coin scheme, this butcher being one of the victims who received a sack of potatoes. Reznikov would not do time for this charge, thanks to a local rabbi named Michael Tversky, who urged butcher Jack Luzman to forgive Reznikov and not proceed with criminal charges. In this June 4, 1989 New York Times article, titled Soviet Emigre Mob Outgrows Brooklyn and Fear Spreads, it actually discussed the schemes in which the likes of Reznikov partook in. They don't mention Vladimir by name, but I did find the following paragraph quite interesting. Early swindles. Bags of gold rubles turned into potatoes. A recent report circulated among law enforcement agencies dates criminal activities back 15 years to Brighton Beach's potato bag gang. A group of confidence artists from Odessa, who posing as merchant seamen, picked out other immigrant marks and offered to sell them antique gold rubles for cheap. A sample coin was authentic, but when the victims paid thousands of dollars for sackfuls of them, the bags turned out to be full of potatoes. New Year's Day, 1981. Soviet emigre Rachmil Dementev lies dead at Brighton Beach's The National Restaurant. Rachmil had been a criminal partner with Vladimir Reznikov, but they seemingly had a falling out, which culminated in Reznikov shooting Dementev to death in front of numerous witnesses. Dementev had just called Reznikov a rat in front of the restaurant crowd, which infuriated Reznikov. He would leave the restaurant and come back to finish off Dementev. Reznikov would go on the lam, but would soon return to Brooklyn to face the law. Only after he convinced numerous witnesses to change their minds, and say that he was only acting in self-defense. Once again, Reznikov would skate free. In May of 1985, Yevsey Agron, the first boss of Brighton Beach, would be assassinated in his apartment building. 
Marat Balagula would take over the operations as the new godfather. Boris Neifeld, an associate of Balagula's, and once a trusted right-hand man of F.C. Agron, would join Marat Balagula in his operation. On February 3, 1986, Vladimir Reznikov, accompanied by 27-year-old Russian emigre Michael Vax, would enter Marat Balagula's Platinum Energy Office at 3001 Avenue U in Sheepshead Bay. They would shoot the place up. Boris Neifel would be shot in the arm, and 33-year-old Ilya Zeltser would be killed. Ilya was a trusted criminal associate of Neifeld and Balagula, and had been indicted with Neifeld on a credit card fraud scheme in the previous October. Michael Vax would also be injured in the shootout and ultimately be charged. But Reznikov would make his escape. On June 12, 1986, Reznikov would make his way into Balagula's Odessa restaurant and threaten to kill him if he did not receive a $600,000 payment, which Reznikov felt was owed to him. As many of you know, Balagula would reach out to his Italian connects, one being Anthony Gaspipe Casso, who would instruct Balagula to tell Reznikov to return the following day in order to receive the money. Reznikov would do just that, but would not find Balagula. He would leave in a rage and enter his car, which was outside 1130 Brighton Beach Avenue. Coincidentally, the apartment building which held the residence of his criminal associate Michael Vax. A light green Plymouth sedan would pull up behind him. The sedan was occupied by none other than Joseph Testa and Anthony Center, the Gemini twins. Two young men who had been making their bones on the streets of Brooklyn for over a decade. First with the Gambino crime family's DeMeo crew, and now as trusted assassins of Vicka Musso, Anthony Casso, and the Lucchese crime family. Joseph Testa would exit the car and approach Vladimir. Just like that, the violent life of 44-year-old Vladimir Reznikov, the Russian gangster who made a name for himself on the streets of Brighton Beach, had come to an end. In 2022, Douglas Century would release his book, The Last Boss of Brighton, Boris Biba Neifeld and the Rise of the Russian Mob in America. The book supplies historical analysis of the beginnings of the Brighton Beach Brooklyn Russian Mob, started by the Soviet emigre who came to the United States in the 1970s and relies on first-hand accounts by Boris Bibi Neifeld, a man referred to as the last living Russian mob boss of the old Russian mob in the U.S., and by all accounts, a true survivor of that world. Boris Neifeld will give us an incredible glimpse into the man known as Vladimir Reznikov, or as he calls him, Vadik Reznik. Boris states that he first became privy to Vladimir Reznikov in 1982, not long after Reznikov assassinated Rachmil Dementev at the National Restaurant in Brighton Beach. Boris would state, By the time I got to know Vadik, he was already starting to lose his mind. He used to say that when he was in his jail cell, the guards were sending invisible rays into his brain. They were shooting in some kind of rays to torture him. Even back then, he was starting to go crazy. He was also heavily into cocaine. He did not shoot up junk, but everyone knew he snorted a lot of cocaine. We would also learn that one of Reznikov's early criminal associates in New York City was a man by the name of Yuri Brokin. Votes are in. Will the real Yuri Brokin please stand up? Yeah. <laughs> there we get the writers. <laughs> Yuri Brokin was a screenwriter, director, author, and journalist who came to the United States in 1972. His books include Big Red Machine, The Rise and Fall of Soviet Olympic Champions, and Hustling on Gorky Street, Sex and Crime in Russia Today. He was also featured in various news editorials. According to Boris Neifeld, Yuri Brokin was more of a criminal than an author during his time in the United States, one of his main associates being Vladimir Reznikov. In April of 1981, Yuri Brokin, who lived in a Manhattan apartment, would lose his wife when he discovered her dead in a bathtub. The death was ruled a suicide. However, Yevsi Agron, the Brighton Beach Don at that time, would tell Neifeld that Vladimir Reznikov and Yuri Brokin were responsible for her drowning and that Yuri collected on a large life insurance policy upon her death. Furthermore, 
the rumblings on the streets of Brighton Beach would mirror the words of FC. Monday, December 6th, 1982. 349 East 49th Street, Manhattan, New York City. Yuri Broken is found shot dead in his bedroom by his girlfriend, Tina. A case filled with $15,000 cash lays beside him, and all valuables in the apartment lay intact. The death is a mystery, but some news outlets ponder if the assassination was politically motivated. The Russian Don, Yevsi Agron, would tell Nafel that Vladimir Reznikov was the killer once more. Nafel states that he was told several times by Agron that Vadik Reznik was the killer. On May 4th of 1985, Yevsi Agron, the Brighton Beach godfather, is found shot dead by the elevator in his apartment at 100 Ocean Parkway. Boris Neyfeld waits outside till he realizes that FC is not there. He leaves the premises to ask around about Yevsi's whereabouts. Little did he know, Yevsi lay dead in his apartment hallway. The most common assumption about this unsolved murder is that Neyfeld was in on it and he formed a pact with Marat Balagula in order to have Marat take over the family. It's an assumption that I myself have mimicked on this channel after researching for some of my uploads. However, Nafel portrays a different story. He claims that he was very devastated by Yevsi's death and he describes him as being a father to him. Boris says that he thought Marat Balagula was behind the murder because originally Marat downplayed the situation of Yevsi's death. Marat would state, why do you feel so bad for him getting killed? Don't feel sorry. He should have been killed a long time ago. Marat would also go on to brag about how much money he was making Nafeld. But the more Nafeld thought about it, the more he realized who killed Yevsi Agron. Vadik Reznik. Nafeld would recall back to two times he spotted Vladimir Reznikov near Yevsi Agron's apartment. He states that there is a bridge by Yevsi's apartment which you see here in this footage. He says that on one of the occasions, which occurred a month before Yevsi's death, he caught Reznikov there and questioned him about what he was doing there. Reznikov told him that he was just visiting a friend. Both times it was odd to Nafeld because he was nowhere near Brighton Beach. Yevsi had grown happened to live in the area you see here, Kensington, Brooklyn, miles away from Brighton Beach. Till this day, as told in the book, The Last Boss of Brighton, Boris, Biba Neyfeld, and the Rise of the Russian Mob in America, Neyfeld believes that Vladimir was scoping out Yevsi's apartment numerous times in order to formulate his plan to take out Yevsi Agron. And that he did on May 4th, 1985. In less than a year, the shooting at Marat Balagula's Platinum Energy Office would take place, and Neyfeld would vow to kill Reznikov but would fail to catch up to him. Nafil would go overseas for business in Europe, and that's when Reznikov would make his move on Balagula and ultimately lose his life when gas pipes sent his henchmen, the Gemini twins, to take care of him on Friday the 13th of June, 1986. As far as Vladimir being taken out by the Italians, this upset Nafil very much, as he felt it was his job to do so and pleaded with Murat to wait for him to return and take care of Vladik Reznik himself. In the end, seems that Vladimir Reznikov was a crazed, power-hungry swindler who became obsessed with murder. Perhaps he thought he would one day become boss in Brighton Beach, Brooklyn. I hope you enjoyed this upload as much as I did making it. This is my third upload in regard to the Russian mob in Brighton Beach, and each time I learn something new, and my mind is blown by some of the new details in this book. The Last Boss of Brighton, Boris Biba Neyfeld and the Rise of the Russian Mob in America, by Douglas Century. I highly suggest you checking this book out, especially if you have an interest in this era of organized crime in New York City. It definitely fills a huge void in terms of the information available about the criminal enterprises in Brighton Beach during the 1970s and 80s. Neyfeld refutes some of the things said in Robert Friedman's Red Mafia and other things heard throughout the years. However, I do highly suggest you check out Red Mafia, as well as any other materials related to this era in New York City in regard to Russian organized crime 
If you have the ability to gander at some of the news at the time, these guys ruled the streets of Brighton, Brooklyn. You could do that as well. If you guys ever need any sources, any news articles that you see me post in my uploads, or anything else, hit me up at nyccrimespot at gmail.com or leave a comment down below. Please like, please subscribe, and thank you for watching another episode or listening to another episode of NYC Crime Spot.